not copy paste in HTML in 2025. You should be using something like an AI web scraper such as Browseract. What is Browseract? It's a no code web scraper that can scrape any site and it can be used for your AI agent. So for example, I'm going to show you later in this tutorial how we can actually interact with web pages and download their content all using this natural language interface, just like ChatGPT. However, if you try to search something here in ChatGPT, it will go and do the search and you can't see under the hood. But as in Browser Act, we can actually see under the hood what's going on. We can watch the agent interact with the website and actually download the page data, not just answer our question, which is super cool. So some of the main features here, of course, it's no code and it has a super easy integration as we can actually use an API key as well. So we can have this automated to run on Make, on Zapier, on NA10 or something like that. Every day we can do that for free because we do get a thousand credits for free every single day. A few other key features of Browser Act is that it blocks ads. So normally when you try to get website data, if there's an advert pops up, it may try to take the advert as part of the data. You don't want that, you just want the data that's behind it this will get that. Additionally, you'll get verification bypass. So not only do ads pop up, but sometimes you get things that say, are you human? Please confirm. Well, this can bypass that as well. Now, bypass everything you're getting the web page, but is it from the right region, right place? Is it a US based information or website that you can only access from the US? Or is it from the UK or wherever it may be? And you can use this global residential IP network to actually do this. Now, it says residential IPs. What does that mean? Well, instead of it being like a bunch of corporate IPs across the world, you can use residential IPs. Imagine it like you appear to be like an actual house or a normal person, a normal user accessing this information. So as you can see, it bypasses geo restrictions and collects localized data, which is super cool. And of course, natural language browser control. Basically using this interface I was just showing you, we can interact with the internet using this natural browser in a way that ChatGPT just can't do. So let's get into a quick demo of how to use this. Well, first of all, as I was saying, you got a thousand credits per day. I'll show you what that actually translates to, but it can be like between 130 to 100 steps. So every individual step, go to this website, go to this site, get that information, etc. Now, completely free, you can launch it here using something like Gmail or your email, or you can go to Discord, sign up with Discord and you'll get extra credits. If you click on here, it will then sign in Gmail or whatever, and this will be the landing page. So, you see we have a few different points here. Mainly, on the left-hand side, you can see your balance, you can see who you're signed in as, agents, workflows, and the create button. Then here, you'll see we have our agents. I have this GitHub trending scraper agent. You can just click to create one of these, you just click create, then just give it a name, create, and it'll pop up like this. Now, from here, I can either run it or I can go to build so I can change the system instructions, the system message to this agent. I can also go to here, which will open up the API, or here, which will edit, here, which will delete it. So if we just even click on it, this is what pops open here. This is the main platform. So we have the instructions for our agent. We also have the ability to add tools coming very soon. Now up here as well, you can see I can now change things. So ChatGPT is using 4.1. I could change that to 4.1 mini. Maybe the results or the processing behind it, the thought pattern may not be as good, but I can get many more websites. I can get the data from much more websites. So if I want something, much more websites. Many more websites. That's the one. And so here basically what it means is that if I just want loads of web page data, this is the best. But if I want it to actually think about what it's going to do, this is the best. And for here you can change temperature as well, so, you know, randomness. In agent settings we can then change stuff too, so max run, max actions, etc. These will all change essentially how robust or how many credits you're going to use up. And then for the browser settings here, as I was saying about the region, you can change that. IP type is always residential, but we can change which country we're actually coming from, which is super cool as well. Now, once you've done this, you can just publish it, publish as a new version, go to run, and now in here, we can actually run it. Now, we have an incognito mode, so if we click on here, you can see that basically what it's doing is that it's running in its own little incognito browser, so it doesn't have any data, it's just... Um, essentially containerized. So we can do something like this here, where we'll paste this in, and we'll say visit GitHub, get the weekly trending 
uh, repos, extract the name, description, language styles and URL and then output this as a CSV. Now if I open this up, you'll see that if we were to do this ourselves, we would normally have to come along, right, you can either do some daft, and we'd have to click got it first actually, then here you'd have to copy and paste this or you can try to open up with inspect and then in here you want to try and find which bit, absolute nightmare. Instead of doing that, you literally just have this here, click send, and then we can now watch our agent go away and do it. And as you see here, we have this live browser and then the output. So the output will be the CSV when it's done, but the live browser will let us see how this agent is actually interacting with the website. And on the left here, we will see all the steps. So I'm gonna let this run, and then we'll come back to it in a minute. So Whilst that's working, let's quickly look at the roadmap because Browser Act is really new tool and so they have some key milestones for the next couple of months. In July, which is right now, they've just released the public beta launch and that's why I have access to this now. So this is the first public access to Browser Act. Additionally, they're going to release AI powered workflows later on in July. In August, something I'm really looking forward to is the ecosystem integration. So they're going to actually integrate it with Zapier and then by September they'll have this visual workflow builder which will simplify the user experience inside of Browser Act. So we'll come over here, we can see that it's working away, we can see that it's, it's seeing the uh, different elements inside the page which never get tired of watching this, I always think it's super cool to watch the LLM try to interact. And so here you can see that it's essentially trying to find what is every, every piece of the page here, I'm trying to read it. And we can actually click in the browser to take control if we need to, so say there's a capture it just can't get by. But there we go, that was actually so fast, 1 minute and 24 seconds. So step 1 was go to the website, 2, extract the data, 3, write it to CSV, 4, deliver that CSV. And it's consumed 120 credits of my 1000 daily, so I could do this every day, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. Then we download that, we have the CSV, let's open it up. And just like that now, we have this CSV file with a repo name, a description, the language, number of stars, and the full repo URL. So you could have this running every day to do something like that. You can just see how powerful this actually is. And because this does have this back and forth way of doing things, I can mark it as done, or I can actually just keep going. So I could now say something like this, filter the Python repos uh, with more than a thousand stars. So if we check this out here, you can see that actually, we see they all have a thousand stars, but we could change that to say 10,000, or we could change it to, I only want to see Java, or whatever it may be. So you can actually see just how powerful this is, for not only scraping the web, but also for interacting with web pages. So if you want to check out Browser Act, it'll be the first link in the description below, and remember the early adopters are going to get reduced pricing, right, so special pricing. We also have our 1,000 free credits, and it'll be on Zapier and Make really soon as well as if we go to build the agent tools are coming soon so really look forward to that so if you liked the video like the video comment let me know what you're using for scraping right now and if this tool is valuable to you subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video take care